Hey, it's Tim here. It's not very often that we get features that take us back to old work excited. Today, I'm going to show you what dynamic zone visibility allows you to do in 2022.3. Now, this is a super exciting feature. It allows you to do what I'm showing you on screen right now. This is going to be awesome. And I'm going to tell you this now. We probably haven't discovered all the things that are possible with this feature. Let's get stuck in. So. To start with, I'm going to show you a very, very basic setup uh, of how this works. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call out to the documentation for this feature straight away. Uh, if you head to the link in the description, I've linked to this. And the key thing to understand is this feature only works on certain fill types. So the first one is a Boolean fill type. The other one is a single value. And another one is independent of the viz. Essentially, a field or parameter must meet these requirements. Now. I've spent a lot of time trying to understand these requirements and I had to reach out to a broad church of people on Twitter and also internally in the information lab. A big thanks to Craig who finally uh, explained to me where this was going to work and um, essentially we got there. But this is a really important requirement because you won't see the feature show up unless you meet these uh, setup requirements. So. Here I am in a basic dashboard. If you're wondering where I've got this dashboard so you can follow along, you can just go ahead and open the first dashboard here in Superstore. Later on in this video, I'll show you another example, which is I've sort of purposely built to show off a much better setup for this. So let's go back to the uh, main dashboard here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just build a parameter and we're gonna use that parameter to hide this map. So the first thing to do is just to build a parameter. Let's go in here straight away to uh, the map itself. And when we go in, um, the first thing we're gonna do immediately is just build a parameter. And uh, when the parameter comes up, we'll just select Boolean in this particular case. We'll call this uh, show map. And uh, obviously the default current value is true and uh, everything else can pretty much stay as is. So I'll click OK. And when I create that show map value and I go back to my overview and I click on the map, you have to make sure you've clicked the map. You can see it's clicked when I get this sort of dark gray border around the map. Then I go to the layout tab here on the top and you'll see there's a new option here saying control visibility using value. Now that I've added that parameter that meets the requirement that I talked about at the beginning, when I tick this box and go to this drop down, you will see that parameter show up. So you can see here the show map option is there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is bring the parameter in. I'm going to bring that, uh, probably going to maybe make it floating so it doesn't get in the way. Oops, doesn't get in the way of my, uh, oh, it's going to get in the way of my thing. So let me instead move it up here and uh, let's make this floating by doing that. And I'll just bring it right here to the map, uh, just above the map, so you can see this working. So now when I set this to false, the map disappears. Set it to true, the map shows up. So immediately, this is a much better way of showing and hiding sheets. We've had to do sort of various hacks in the past to get this to work. And this is basically the basic mechanic for this feature. It's driven by a parameter and uh, it can also be driven by a field. I'll come to the field in a second. Um, but in essence, it's a very, very simple setup. Now, the other thing to bear in mind here is that, of course, these parameters can be affected by parameter actions. So you could create a scenario where something fires a parameter action that changes the visibility of the sheet because it's changing the parameter here that's controlling the visibility. So that is that is literally the feature in a nutshell. That is the simplest setup you can do. If that's all you want to do, basically show or hide various charts, you can use this capability straight away. The other thing, the very subtle thing, and I, I haven't really touched on this yet, is if I hide this, when it when it gets rid of that particular thing, it actually doesn't exist on the dashboard anymore. So unlike before where you show and hide sheets, you'd remain with one or two pixels on the left and the right at the bottom. This completely gets rid of it from the visualization. So you don't end up with this sort of weird spacing issue that you might get if you're trying to lay up a bunch of things to sort of collapse inside of the same setup. So I find this really, really good. I think it's a great capability. You can, of course, work with this parameter to have something else show up when it says false. So when the map is hidden, you could, for example, show a line chart or something else. But here, the collapsing containers are just uh, essentially filling the space naturally. Now, I will pre-warn you, <laughs> if you really want to use some of the best capabilities of this feature, you're going to have to get good at containers. And I hate to say that because you shouldn't have to be good at containers to make this feature work. But it turns out that this zone capability doesn't just control sheets. It also controls whole sections of the visualization. Let's bring this uh, back in. And this time I'm going to select this map and I'm going to remove this so that it doesn't change anymore. 
Okay, so let's just go back to true and let's see that the false doesn't change anything. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click the map like this. And what that does is selects everything in the blue container you can see on screen, which includes the two charts on the right hand side. And you'll see here that I have this visibility option here as well. So I can now control these whole section of the visualization with this capability. So now my show map parameter controls whether the whole visualization shows up or not. And so this is really powerful because you're not just changing sheets. You can essentially change whole sections of the entire dashboard. Let's try one more thing. Let me just show you this because what I didn't include last time was uh, the filters. So let's go uh, double click that one more time. So the whole bottom section of the whole entire visualization will go in, select it. I know I'm laboring the point here, but it's, it's really sort of important to drum home here. You can just wholesale hide whole sections of your dashboard with this capability. And that's just the basic setup. It's already miles better than it was before. And it's going to get rid of a ton of hacks. If you know me and hacks, I hate hacks. I don't like them. Uh, check out my video on that as well. But nonetheless, that is sort of, that is like tier one of this feature. Now, when you start to get more capable with this feature, what you're going to want to do is think about how it works with containers, think about how it works with parameter actions, and then more importantly, think about how you can piece that together to make an experience. And I think I have to recommend that people now really start to think carefully about people's user journeys, because when you start to do that, you might actually be able to build multiple experiences within a single dashboard, depending on the user, and have those work based off interactions through parameter actions or even specific URLs that enable and disable certain parts of the dashboard by just changing the parameters in the URL. That's going to be another uh, pretty nice use case. So I've shown you one way of doing this. Let's go to <laughs> not something I made earlier, but something I prepared earlier, because in order to show you this whole thing, I need to walk through a couple of steps with you. So let's uh, go over to this other dashboard. You can see here I have a very basic visualization. And uh, if you look at the bottom, you see that I have a bunch of different sheets. OK, and I just have one dashboard. And if I go to my dynamic zone visibility dashboard, you can see that everything more or less uh, fits on the dashboard. Now, what I've done here is I've set this much, much wider than it should be. So let's go ahead and just compress this right down so that it fits on screen. So there you go. You can now see everything on the dashboard. Now, in order to set this up, it's not a great dashboard. I completely sort of uh, say that up front. Uh, in order to set this up, um, the best way I could find of working with this uh, high show zone capability is not to uh, essentially build a dashboard and hide and show the zones to build it. Because essentially what was happening is I was getting selection issues, so I couldn't quite select the zones easily. So what I've done is I've put everything on the dashboard. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dynamically hiding them based on certain parameters. Now, in order to do that, I've written a slightly different calculation. So I'll go back to my main sheet here, and you'll see that I've got these three calculations. Now, they actually result in Booleans as well. And what I've done is I've also created another parameter called category. And the category parameter, if I show you this, let's just start with the parameter. It's the simple parameter uh, with a string. And then you've got a bunch of values, which is a list. And it's basically loading it from the category field in my data set. Now, I've ticked uh, when workbook opens loaded from the category. In many ways, what you should really do is use fix because what you don't want the, the user to do is select something that hasn't yet been designed. So I'll load the values from that field, but then I'll leave it as fixed. So if a new category shows up, I need to go in and add it to the dashboard to make it work. So that's step one, set up your parameter. Step two, we set up three calculations, one for each category. It's pretty straightforward. Parameter category equals furniture. And uh, you have to make sure you don't sort of get any typos in these um, sort of um, fields and make sure they're actually correct. Otherwise, the parameter won't fire. And you can see these are just three parameters, uh, sorry, three calculations checking the parameter. And now you've done that, you've essentially created the three uh, fields that Tableau can then use to control each of the sections of the dashboard. So now, if I just go to my Dynamic Zone Visibility Dashboard, what I can do is I can select each section like this. So I've double and I've actually triple clicked here because I've got two items in here. So I've triple clicked to get the blue icon for this zone. I've gone to layout, I've gone to control visibility, and this pink one is office supplies. Notice how I've tried to do a bit of color matching to make it obvious. So office supplies only. Okay, that's uh, set up. So now that's good. The office supplies is currently where the parameter is set up. So uh, this is already working because you can see that this has not disappeared. 
But as soon as I go to the next one, let's go ahead and triple click this. I go to control visibility. This one's going to be uh, furniture. You'll see it immediately disappears. But you can see that it's still selected on my dashboard. Maybe this is a bug. Maybe this shouldn't happen. But what I found it hard to do is how do you select the thing that doesn't currently exist? It's essentially taking up the same space. Things are collapsing around it, but you can't really select it. So in, in my sort of experience, it was easy to build everything, then add the interactivity at the final step. And then for the final one, let's go to technology. Uh, we need to double click this because this one has legends and filters in it as well. Let's just add that in. And in fact, what I, what I will do is remove this because that shouldn't be there. And uh, let's go back in and do that again, select that go to control visibility and then select technology only. So now you can see it's still selected and everything is good. So we've got this uh, dashboard that's setting uh, basically set up to switch between different users. And so let's go ahead and uh, in essence, go back to the dashboard, make this a little more narrow. So this is actually now the design I was actually going for a nice sort of cute small dashboard. Let's just collapse the height a little bit. Actually, we'll keep that um, uh, we'll keep that as it is. That that's sort of okay for me, actually. I'll, I'll I can do a few other things, but if we don't want to sort of mess around with this too much, let me move this across. We're actually going to get rid of this parameter soon, uh, but I just wanted to show you. Okay, this is the setup. So now, watch what happens as I switch between these sections. So here I am going to furniture, going to office supplies, then going to technology, and they're each themed, and the charts uh, expand and fill as they should do. And now that you know everything is set up, I can actually more accurately sort of control the spacing in the, each particular zone. And I can go in here and I think this has been set to a fixed width. We'll actually get it to uh, not do that. And we'll do this as well, not to do, um, I would set a, it's set to a fixed uh, height there. But if I keep going again, I should eventually find the fixed width item here. And now this is sort of fully collapsing. So you, <laughs> your container game needs to really be on point to get this to work elegantly. And uh, what I'll do is I'll hide the title here so you can't even see that it's technology. So technology, office supplies, and uh, furniture. Okay, this is all great. Now, the final touch, which I haven't done yet, I'm going to try it first time while I'm recording this video, is to set up a parameter action driven by this top chart because, of course, these values match the parameter exactly. So as I click different items, it should switch between different charts. And when I uh, deselect the item, it should clear all the different things. I'm not sure that final step will work the way I expect, but let's go ahead and do this. So I'll go up to the dashboard options. We'll go to, uh, where is it, actions. And then what we want to do is set up a parameter action. Now, my main sheet is the one at the top. So I'll say, look, let's add a parameter. And we're going to change the parameter here. And what we're going to do is take this from, let's go to, uh, there's a little trick here. If you've ever wondered how to multi-select everything, you take the first one, scroll down, hold shift, and deselect, OK? And now that you've done that, what you can do is you can just select one of these. Let's say we're taking it from the main sheet. The target parameter is going to be this one. And essentially, it's going to be passing the field uh, category in this particular case, OK? And when you clear the selection, yeah, uh, you, can ch you can change what it sets the value to. Now, in this particular case, I don't think I have um, uh, like a, a value that shows nothing. So what you should do is have a fourth item which says none, and then that would basically cancel everything out. So what we'll do is just keep this to current value. I'm not going to sort of bother with that. And we'll just leave that as is. So we'll call this um, parameter action. OK. So now what this parameter sheet is doing is it's actually sending instructions to the visible parameter that we've got. And that is controlling each of the different calculations we've got. And it's basically triggering. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now when I click on each one, you can see the chart is changing. So how cool is that? You can switch and switch off uh, whole sections of the whole dashboard uh, just by clicking on a particular item. I think that's incredible. I think that's such a powerful capability. Um, honestly, I think it's, it's, it's just one of these things that just goes, yes. This has just changed the game of what is possible with Tableau. And I have to say, again, this doesn't happen that often, especially with work you've already done. You can actually think of maybe examples in the past where you've wanted to do sort of weird things and it just doesn't work as beautifully as you thought it would. And now you can do that nice and easily using parameter actions. And in fact, in this particular case, I can now get rid of that selector because 
who needs an interface when I can just rely on the interaction? That's pretty much it for my example. Now, of course, there's so many other use cases you can use here. If I go to my browser, what I've done is I've seen other sort of ideas come up. So um, if I go first to Twitter, let's go to Sam Parsons. He's actually been able to use this to uh, do some zooming. So if we go look at his example and we just go to uh, his public profile, I'll put a link to this in the description. What he's doing is when you click on a specific zone, and I haven't downloaded this or found out how to do it. I'm the kind of nerd who likes to understand how could this could be possible. Um, so when you click on zoom, it actually zooms the whole chart in and out, which is, I think is just super useful, right? And of course, it also really nicely works with uh, the side panel because of course this feature controls the zone and uh, notice that it even hides the button there and then you put it back out, uh, collapse it back in, the button comes back. Um, and then you can even do things like uh, collapse uh, whole sections of the container or add and change the way different things are working. So there's so many Nice little bits of interactivity here. It's just unbelievable. Um, I, I can't believe sort of the art of the possible. I, I, I'm a little bit frustrated that we have to cajole containers as much as we're going to have to to make this work really, really well. But, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Anything to make this experience better. So that's uh, Sam Parsons. I'll put a link to uh, the example he's got on Tableau Public um, uh, in the description. The next one is from Kevin. Um, he's basically just highlighted the point that I was talking about, you know, thinking back of old solutions and finding new ways of uh, making them work. So here he's gone back and adapted a, a dynamic sort of show and hide setup with parameters and filters. And yeah, he's, he's been able to make it a lot easier and a lot simpler. And the other thing is that this should be more performant because you're not having to create these nasty calculations in the background to do all of this work. And the very last one is from Luke. Um, so Luke has an interesting one. I'll be honest, I haven't figured out how this works yet. Um, but in essence, you can see he's clicking on individual customers and it's loading up a chart specific to that customer each time. And so I think this is really cool because you, you almost have these exploding visualizations. You can now almost change and break the mold of how things are working. So uh, check these out. I'll link to this in the description as well. So you can check out all three of these fantastic resources. And uh, by, by no means this is it. I, I'm certain there are people out there who are already uh, planning their Ironviz uh, competition entries and have just realized they have to start again because this has just come out of nowhere and changed the art of the possible. So um if that's you, I feel sorry for you, but nonetheless, that's pretty much it. Okay, we're going to stop here. That's pretty much the end of the video. Let me know what you've done with uh, this capability in the description below. Uh, once again, I am making other videos on 22.3. It's a little slower than normal because we only got our hands on it two days ago. The pre-release wasn't as uh, good, so we couldn't see some of this stuff in advance. Um, so yeah, check out the other videos in this playlist for this video. And uh, yeah, if you are not subscribed, subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think of the video in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next video. <clears throat> hey, it's Tim here. It's not very often that features... <clears throat> Start again.